In this video, I'm gonna talk about the best way for you to release your music. How often should you release music? Should you do singles? Should you do albums? What's a waterfall strategy? Where should you release your music? Uh, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because often I see a lot of newer artists, you know, they're launching their first release and they drop an entire album. And then they promote it for a week and then they disappear for two years while they work on the next album and then they release a second album. And this is an extremely bad way to release your music 99% of the time. There are exceptions, certain genres of music, certain industries where people just want an album. And that's a different story. I'm talking about for most people. And even if you think, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing progressive metal. People in that industry love albums. And it's like, yeah, that is, that is a niche where albums are more preferred than hip hop and pop and EDM. But even still, I think you should do what's in this video. So first, let me just say the best release strategy, in my opinion, that you should use. I would release a single every single four to eight weeks and keep doing that until you have enough material that's released to make up an album and then compile all that songs together into an album. And if you want to do a waterfall release strategy along the way or several times along the way to building up to that album, you can. Now, some of you might have no idea what I just said, so let's go through that. So first of all, why should you be releasing singles? Well, the reason is, at least on Spotify, every time you, you upload a, a, a single, Every time you have a release, you can pick one song from that release. So if it's a single, you get to pitch, you get a chance with every song. And what you can do with every song is you can pitch it to Spotify editorial playlists. Now, Spotify editorial playlists are kind of a pipe dream, like very, very small chance of you getting accepted to those, especially when you're starting off. However, every song you release has a chance to be, actually, it will definitely be on release radar for all the people that follow you. So also when you're starting off, this isn't a huge deal. But over time, it'll matter more and more because every time you have a release, all your followers are going to have your song in their release radar and it can get an algorithmic placement to people who have never heard of you. Now, the other reason why singles are so important outside of just Spotify <laughs> is that every time you have a release, it gives you a chance to talk about your music, make social media content, run Facebook ad campaign, run a YouTube ad campaign on your music video and come up with a new merch lineup or whatever. You know, you get all this stuff you can do every time you have a new thing to talk about, like a single. So if you do an album, it's going to be really hard for you to talk about that album for a year. But let's say your, your album has 12 songs. It's a lot easier to talk about a song for a month, another song for a month, another song for a month. And of course, you're not just talking about the song. But there's all this stuff along the way that, that you can actually do with it. And this is the reason why that over time, artists have been releasing more and more singles. It's not too uncommon to see an artist that has released an album where out of the 12 songs in the album, eight to 10 of them were already released as singles. And that's just because of all the reasons I mentioned before. You get the release radar thing, you get the editorial pitching thing, you get the fact that you can basically promote yourself 24-7, 365 across the year uh, instead of dropping something and disappearing and ghosting your audience for a year or two as you work on the next album, which is kind of how people used to do it. So now this doesn't mean that you should just never release an album because you can get the best of both worlds. Like for me, what I use albums as is they're kind of like a line in the sand, they're the end of an era. They're like a way for you to combine all the stuff you've been working on and put it out as a product. And the cool thing is when you have that wrapped up product, you can sell it, you can get press about it too. And, and so like you can make physical CDs, you can make vinyls, you can make cassettes if you wanted to, you can sell the whole album as a download, you can make merch that's related to the album, which you can do with singles, it's a little harder to do. Um, but with an album, it's this kind of big thing that's like a, a more sellable chunk of information to sell to someone than individual songs. So if you have a 12 song album, and even if it's already done, Plan to release a song a month or so every four to eight weeks. I would say try to stay towards the four to six, then the six to eight if you can. Over the course of the year, and then after you've got like eight or nine singles, get those remaining three or four and release them as an album. And I want to show you a little bit about the waterfall strategy. I do have a dedicated video for it that you can check out right there, but I'll give you just kind of a brief summary before we move on. Uh, the waterfall strategy, basically, it's the process of releasing the same song several times by bundling it with new songs or a new song. So if you look at this timeline, this is one of my new bands. Um, well, this is my, I guess my newest project, Every Waking Moment. It's like alternative metal if it's your cup of tea. But we released a song February 25th, and I guess I'll do last since 2015, so you can see all the streams. The project launched like in 2022. But February 25th, 2022, one song, Headlock. March 25th, 2022, we released the Come Alive EP, 
it had come alive, but it also had headlocked. And then in May 13th, 2022, we released I Am, but also had come alive and headlocked. And then I think it's July 1st, we're <laughs> dropping our fourth release. It's going to have the new song with these three songs on it as well. And the cool thing about that is you, it kind of has the effect that you're like growing this album over time. The downside of it is it kind of clutters your, your release feed, but I don't care about that. And I don't think anyone else does either. Um, so I would, I would just deal with it. You can't pull releases and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure if it like messes things up with fans that have saved the song or added to a playlist. Um, technically it should be fine, but it's up to like Spotify what to do when you pull or push a release. So I would just leave everything up. So now that you kind of understand that the, the best way to release your music is genuinely just to release more frequently since, you know, instead of doing an album every two years, release singles essentially on a monthly basis. If you can, you can do this waterfall stuff. I personally use a service called DistroKid to distribute my music and get it on all, all the stores like Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, whatever. Um, and DistroKid is sponsoring this video, but I just want to point out that I've been paying for their service. Um, I still pay for their service, actually. But I've been paying for it since when did this song come out? February 9th, 2018. So I guess February, January 8th, 2018 um, is when I put this song out. And I feel like there might have been a song before that I deleted. Maybe I didn't. But any, either way, so I've been paying for it for a while. <laughs> the reason why I recommend it is with DistroKid, you don't pay per release. So the last thing that you want to be thinking of when you want to put out a new song is, I don't want to release this song. I'd rather wait because I can't afford it or because I, you know, instead of releasing a song a month, I'd rather just like release like two EPs a year or, you know, you don't want to be thinking about that. You just you want to be able to put unlimited music out and not worry about the price because some other distributors charge you either per release, per release plus a commission or, or a bunch of different ways. With DistroKid, you pay a yearly fee for a certain amount of artist slots. And so in particular, if you're using the Musician Plus plan, and I'll put a number on the screen if I'm wrong, I would recommend you use the Musician Plus plan. You get two artist slots, unlimited music for two different artists, and you can reuse ISRC codes. And the reason why that's important, because one, if you want to do the whole uh, waterfall release strategy, and again, more info on that up there in the card, um, you need to be able to reuse the ISRC code. So for only around 35-ish dollars a year, you can release unlimited music and do the waterfall release strategy, or if you prefer just to do that strategy where you're dropping singles and then like two years later, like I did here, you wanna combine them into an album. <laughs> 12 of these 19 songs were already released by the time the album came out. You can do that on the Musician Plus plan for around $35 per year. So this is DistroKid, they are sponsoring this video, but again, I've been using them forever and I, I wouldn't be using them or recommending them to you if I didn't genuinely I uh, enjoy their service and all the other features. Now, of course, just releasing music on itself is not going to get people to hear your music. You need to come up with some kind of marketing strategy to get people to hear it. And one of the most effective ways that I found to get people to hear my music is with Facebook ads. So if you check out this playlist right here, I have a bunch of stuff where you can learn how to promote your music with Facebook ads. And if you're, you prefer a more organized course, I do also have a course that can take you through it as well. Anyways, thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.